What's up guys? So first of all, I'm going to show you how I fit concealed shower valves. So what to do first is position your valve where you think, where pretty much you're going to need it, the centre of the tray for me. So get a bracket on that you can screw it, level it off, and it gives you something nice to fix your bracket to. It's best fix into a nice bit of wood, because then it just allows you to just get a good fixing, and then you've no hassles. Next up, we're going to have our tails. This is a 3 quarter to 15 mil male iron, which goes into the female body of the valve. There's three ports. I use the Loctite glue here. You basically glue it around the threads. I've used actually quite a wee bit of excess on this, and it just seals it up. It saves me using PTFE tape and stuff like that. I think this stuff's bulletproof. It's brilliant every time I've used it and had no problems. So for this shower valve I've got, it's actually got three ports. A hot, a cold, and I mix out to the head because once you'll see when I set the valve up, it's actually got an arm body on the right here. So all you have to do is put this nut in, hand tight, and then tighten up your shifter, wipe off the glue, and you're absolutely sorted. No leaks, no mess, no nothing. I wouldn't turn the water on straight away. You still need to set everything else up, but I normally give it water 20 minutes to allow the glue to set. Pretty simple. Just a little tighten up with your my back wheel shifter and we're sorted. So next up we're going to put the other tails in. As you can see the cold is marked blue and the hot is marked red. Couldn't be any more simpler and that feed there is the mix feed which will go up to the head above it. So next up when I get my bracket on I get a bit of sheet of plasterboard because what you're going to want to do is put the plate on to make sure. See these little big fat nuts there at the back? See if they're protruding out past the tile. What's going to happen is, you're going to be left with a big gap. And it's going to look like a terrible finish. So see the little big fat shrouds? They actually need to be behind the plasterboard. That's like a, a, a certain depth. If you read the instructions, it'll tell you on it. So what I'm going to now do is, I'm going to take that bit of wood out that I've put in. And I'm going to put two bits of skirt on top of each other. Screw it in. And it's going to be solid. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try the faceplate on. Make sure it lube up the rubber seals and the rubber seal on this and it just means it doesn't rip, it doesn't tear and it's just the valve's going to slide on with pretty much pure ease. And then that'll give you your depth on it. You basically want this plate kind of either 5 to 10 mil off the plasterboard or pretty much touching it and it's going to give you a little bit of room to play with. And you're going to, you can't really go wrong with this. If you stick to, see what I mean, how big that gap is? That's way too big. You can fit your hand in there so water would pour in there. So what I'm going to do is get my trusty Allen key out and I'm going to loosen off. This is for the handheld shower port. It goes onto that right hand side arm bar. Again, lube it all up. Pour it on, test it. You want to test everything. Because you do this once, you take a wee bit of time, you do it right and you're sort of, look, that's me got my skirt on, it's tight as a duck's. You know what? So this is what the valve kind of looks like set up wise. There we go. We've leveled it off, made sure the levels are in. This is for the clips. We're going to drill our mix feed up, which is going to go up to the shower head. There's our pipes coming through. We're just going to make sure to clip them, level them off, and make it look nice and neat. Shower head's up there. There we go. We've got it piped in hot. That's the mix feed up to the elbow bracket into the back of the thing. And then all I'm going to do is press it up. I use the Rothenberger, Rothenberger press gun normally with Konex fittings. But obviously my merchant didn't have any. So it is what it is and we've used these. But look, it looks nice and neat. You want it to look neat and you just want to do a good job. Good standard. No matter what you're doing. If it's hidden, you know, that's hidden. I could have done it in here, pushed it in, whatever. But, well, but it's done. So, and you always want to test your fittings, test your water, make sure you have no leaks. Sheet it, forget about it, you'll never have problems. But the thing is, always, always test your work and make sure everything's okay before closing up.